everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, it's been one of those days, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's definitely been one of those days, but um, still breathing, still in the fight. Uh, look, you saw the intro. You know the routine. Um, there's such a great need for the work that we do at the Odyssey Project from our programs, from uh, domestic violence, intimate partner violence, incest, trauma for black women, to the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative and Wraparound Services for Mental Health uh, and others for our research center and our think tank. Uh, we've been doing this for more than two decades. I've been in the fight for over three. Look, we need your support. Uh, never more have we need, needed your support. If you don't understand, we're losing generations because we're not touching our youth. We are losing them because they're not being holistically educated. They're not being properly socialized into the context of their identity and their responsibility within the enclave and the collective and in life in general. And that has uh, resulted in a large portion of the uh, young adult male population having a, 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 a warped sense of self-responsibility and code. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. So again, we need you to give. And maybe after this uh, little nah, tribe of mine, because I'm about to get a little raw and be straight, uh, you'll see the need again to support what we're doing. And if not, you know, you don't. Um, and for those of you, this is probably the, 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 the video where my subscriber count goes now. It's amazing. Uh, talk about bull crap, subscriber count goes up. Not that I ever talk about bull crap, but stuff that isn't as empowering as stuff that mat matters. You know, so what, what this celebrity said about something, you know, I'll find a way to make a teaching moment out of it because that's when people listen. And I'm trying to get certain points across and I have to find creative ways to do it. Subscriber numbers go up. When I start talking about accountability, when I start talking about, let's look at what we're doing wrong, subscriber numbers go down. Uh, and I don't think we really understand just how much they're using social media to track how we behave, what we say, what we think, what we respond to. Let me tell you something. I've been collecting data off of social media as a part of research for 10 years. And especially YouTube and Facebook. Facebook allows you to download your entire history. Every post, every comment that anybody ever made on your profile, you've got it. And I've been doing it for years. I download my profile every quarter. And I've got all that data. And then I've gotten, I got software that breaks it down. It tells me what my people are thinking, how they are thinking, how they can be manipulated. That's the strategy that they're using. And they have far greater resources than I have. And so they're using it against us. We think we're, uh, someone said something about 20 years ago. And, and I don't think it was new. I think it, it actually has its origins in the 1950s, but he said that power isn't forcing someone to do something. Power is having the ability to convince people to do something and then believe it was their idea. And I watched my brothers and sisters spew uh, rhetoric and and, 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 and ideas and thoughts that they actually think they hold and don't realize that it's been inculcated into their mentality and psyche through a systematic infusion of faulty paradigms that are meant to disrupt, disarm, and so much more. Uh, and, you know, so when I make a statement, uh, when I talk about something, I'm not talking about it from my feelings. I'm talking about it from years of under reading researching, conducting my own studies, uh, looking at what studies are available uh, in existence, uh, extant studies that are out there now that I can sit up and observe and look at and see with, 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 with some consistency, certain behavior, certain patterns 
uh, that work against us. Also see with consist some consistencies, the small pockets of things that are working for us. And then make some uh, assessments of the best way to try to use this strategically. This is what I've been doing for years. I'm not out here just jacking my jaws. This is literally, I just dropped book number, well, I didn't drop it yet, but uh, I just started the pre-order for book number 26. I've been in this for a minute. I've been doing it for a minute. That doesn't count the thousands of academic articles I've written, uh, research papers, themes, theses, dissertations. Uh, I, I, I've been in this thing, and I'm not saying that to get pats on the back. I'm saying that to try to lay the foundation of how I move and why I get so frustrated. So here, here here's what I got to say, and it's not going to take long. Any black man that thinks it's a flex to say, I don't care about black women who get killed with some form of it being because they chose this dude. I'm talking about specifically about intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide. They chose this dude, they chose to do this. And the idea is that, you know, the idea, first of all, it's a form of victim blaming. It totally takes the off onus off of the person who actually committed the act. Unless you walk in and saying, I know this dude is going to kill me. I'm going to go in and get killed. You didn't sign up for what you got. Now, you may have went into a situation. And here's the thing. Because I have done it. One thing, Dr. Uh, one thing that Dr. Uh, John Howard Clark said once during, during what was supposed to be a, a debate is before he actually started to speak, his first statement was, I only debate my equals, all others I teach. When I first saw that, uh, I actually saw the, vi the film, the video. More than likely back then it was film, it was wild. But I actually saw it and I'm like, that, you know, I don't know what the term was then, but it wasn't flex, but I'm like, that's straight, you know, that's straight hard. You know, I'm thinking he he's capping, you know, like he's coming hard and capping. He wasn't. He was being extremely reasonable. What he was actually trying to relay is you can't come to me if you haven't and then debate me on any topic where you haven't put an equal amount of work or at least on a, 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 enough work to where we have the same level of knowledge about it and experience about it. You can't have a, 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 a certain awareness and then I have 25 years of understanding and study and we debate it we can talk about it and i can teach you and you can learn but you can't debate me because you haven't developed the capacity to develop ideas around it on a level that i have and so when i when i first heard that i'm like man that's a straight cap you know if i guess we were using today's uh terminology you know you would say that was a straight flex the truth of the matter it wasn't a flex it was a very reasonable statement and so when i look at situations like this that's why i'll have one exchange or two exchanges with someone and then i back off because i'm not going back and forth with someone that by their very uh conversation is revealing to me that they haven't done what i've done because I can have, I have conversations with people who have uh, uh, opposing views and opinions, but I can tell by the conversation, they are aware of what I'm aware of. They are viewing it from a different perspective, but at least they have the same, same awareness. When a person comes in and says certain things, I know they're speaking solely from how they feel about it. Something that that's been inculcated into their psyche through some form of propaganda, through some form of social engineering, through some form of construct that is designed to feed them information that works against them and, and, and let me let me be very clear about this any mindset in which the black man does not regard the pain of the black woman as being a problem is is it is it, it, is backwards it's counterproductive and it doesn't reflect the leadership that black men constantly want to claim as a leader, I'm responsible even for the people that I'm looking at and shaking my head at because of some of the decisions and moves they're making. That's leadership. I don't get to just say I'm a leader and lover of the ones that do what I want them to do and act how I think they should act. That's not leadership. 
that's just finding a, a vein where everybody is doing what you want them to do and jumping in and claiming something. Leadership is the ability to move in situations where everything isn't what it should be in the, in, in the ability to change the culture. You can, you can make it analogous to sports. You've seen coaches come into situations where the program sucks on any level, high school, college, and pro. The program sucks, but they bring a winning culture in how we approach the game, how we approach practicing, how we approach training, how we approach uh, the film room. All of these things change the culture. There now is an expectation and a standard that each person on the team is holding one another accountable to. And that changes the trajectory and you start to see wins. There's a reason why Mike Tomlin in what? There's a reason why Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh is yet to have a losing season in 15 seasons. I think it's 15. 15 seasons, no losing seasons. Why? He has a winning culture. And even when they were they were trying to tag him with his first losing season this year because he felt so far behind, he was able to rally his troops. He was able to get behind his troops because he's a leader. You never hear him once come out and say, we're losing because we don't have the talent. We're losing because this person sucks at this position. He just kept saying, we're going to get better. We're going to get better. And he led by example. He stood out in front. That's how you lead. You lead out in front, not by pointing fingers, not by uh, a point of indifference. This idea that if when I sound hard, it makes me more of a man. No, it shows that there's a weakness. It shows that you haven't been properly, properly socialized completely into your manhood because your number one responsibility is to protect our women. I was reared by a man born in 1909 when there wasn't even questions about what manhood looked like, when, when there were no televisions and to influence it, when there was no radio and there was no um, um, social media and internet to influence it. It was a man teaching his son to be a man and it was being passed down. So I got to be reared by my great grandfather, my grandmother's parents reared me. So I got to see manhood from a different perspective. I was told and then I watched. I was told what I was supposed to do. Then I watched it. There were just certain things a man don't do. There are certain things a man does. And no time is a man supposed to put his hands on a woman. A man is supposed to be a protector. A man is supposed to be a provider. And being a provider isn't about paying all the bills. If you're capable of doing that big ups to you but your presence should be so powerful that any contributions your woman has to make in the area of finances number one is reasonable under the circumstances with an expectation that as you grow and become more empowered and aware that you increase in your capacity to take care of her but also she should feel safe in your love, safe in your presence, safe in your covering, safe in the fact that you're never going to speak ill to her, that you're not going to handle her rough. I never raise my voice to, you know, that person. I never. When it gets heated, okay, you know, you'll probably get mad because we're not going to argue, you know. And I don't heard a, a bunch of times. So you don't, you just going to walk off. You know? No, I'm not walking off from it. I actually heard what you said. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go over here and sit down and think about it outside of the heat of the moment so that I can give it real thought and real consideration and not be so focused on trying to win the argument. So I'm not going to argue with you. And I'm definitely not going to have a shouting and cussing match. That's not what we're going to do now. I can't tell you what to do. But even, and see, that's the thing. We're so caught up in trying to be equals and leaders at the same time. And I'm, when I say equals, I don't mean we're better than them. I mean that if we're going to be out and lead, we can't do everything they do. And we can't keep blaming our behavior on them. And now anybody that knows me understands without a shadow of a doubt that I don't think our women's shit don't stink. I'm not the one. I'm not one that doesn't think that our women have cap culpability in a lot of things that's going on. They're grown. They're adults. They have a responsibility to themselves to uh, protect themselves. They have a responsibility to themselves to be their best version of themselves to heal themselves. But we as men have a responsibility to ourselves and to them, and that is to make sure that they're safe. 
And anytime that they're not safe, the idea that because they chose to be around a person means that they don't deserve it. So if you don't care about the person who dated this person that killed them because they chose to be with this person, and I'm going to get to something in a second. What about all the family members that lost them? What about the children they left behind? Do you care about them? Do you care about the situation they created? Do you care about the ecosystem dynamic that's going to flow out of that missing person in that family dynamic? Do you care about that? Or is it all just chalked up to her? Forget the dude that did it. Forget all the other people that's hurt. I don't care about it because she... Now, here's the other part about this. And then I'm going to close it out. The other part about this is... There's this assumption that every black man that kills his significant other or his ex-significant other is some thug, hardcore dude on the street that's that's the worst thing in the world that you just look at and say, that's what you wanted and you got it. No, there are nerds. There are, there's a doctor, an anesthesiologist, doctor that on Facebook killed the girlfriend, then went and killed the ex-wife. He wasn't a thug. He was a professional six-figure dude. That was another one who was a business owner. The idea that women are going out and choosing the worst possible thing because that's what they want is completely ignoring causality and origin. It's completely ignoring an entire part of the science of psychology that I'm not making decisions solely out of a, 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 a vacuum. I'm making a decision out of my experiences and the paradigms that have been shaped in my mind and what I see. What you see in the vast majority of this is that most of these women don't have men. The fathers weren't present in the home. Now, it does happen. But normally when you see that happen, you see the father immediately right behind that trying to get to do. But what you see most of the time is a lot like 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 what like these dudes. That, so what about the young black girls? that fall in this 15 to 44 category that are killed by their mother's boyfriends. They didn't choose it. See, that's what I'm saying. We want to group it all up and, and the whole thing is the one, what, what you got to understand is it's absolute, absolutely asinine to believe that somebody selected and sit up and looked at somebody and said, this guy's probably going to kill me, but I'm going to be with him. That's not what the mind is thinking at the time. The mind is searching for something that the soul is is yearning for and there's a confusion because there hasn't been proper development proper nurturing proper love proper affection more than likely from a man so they are seeking it the only way they know how and more and the crazy thing is the thing that that's hurting them the most is the thing that's more likely to be gravitating to it happens all the time it happened with men too men end up with man women just like their moms even even if their moms were someone they couldn't stand and so it's it, it, it's funny i wonder if it's going to be a situation in which the guys that sit up and say they you know they don't feel bad for women who get killed or do you feel bad when it's a woman killing a man my thing is most of these situations take place after the woman actually comes to a point where she starts to realize who she is she starts to develop a sense of self-worth, self-value, self-esteem. And she realizes she no longer wants to be in that. And she decides she's going to do something better with her life. The thing she should have known in the beginning, but obviously she didn't because she's discovering it now. And so she's walking away. So you can't say it's what she wanted because she's actually discovering it. it's not what I want and I'm leaving. And that's when she gets killed. Now, again, I'm not talking about one or two incidents. I'm not talking about what I read in the news. All this stuff comes across my desk because of what I do. But I'm talking about the past. But I'm the person who sounded the trumpet about intimate partner violence and incest in the black home, uh, in the scientific world, where where there were no studies about that 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 that, that isolated the unit unit of analysis being black women. I sounded that. I initiated that because it was too many black women coming into my office to see me that had been molested as children. I'm, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Come to find out it's the elephant in the room. So you can't tell me that coming out of something like that doesn't create an issue. And, 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 and I'm speaking on it from a point of research, but also the fact 
that I've helped over a thousand black females get to a better place. I've helped over a thousand black males get to a place. I've been in this work for a minute. So when I'm talking about it, I'm not talking about it from how I feel. I'm talking about it from what I've seen, what I've observed, what I know. And again, to sit up and say, man, I don't feel bad for him. That's not a flex. That's actually an open acknowledgement and revelation to where you are. Now, it may not matter to you because you don't know you're not there. That's the danger. You don't know you're not there. You actually think you, you're saying something, you're feeling powerful, and it's easy to point the finger at the victim, right? The problem is there are a bunch of people watching what you're posting, and they're judging how effective their campaigns are. They're watching and they're saying, the black man is almost done with caring about what the white, what the black woman goes through. Now, I'll tell you how far this goes back if you think I'm playing. Before there were any studies, before anything, Malcolm told you the most unprotected person on the planet is a black woman. The most uncovered person on the planet. He told you this. Malcolm told you this in the 60s. So this isn't something Doc just came up with and started ranting about. This has been an issue. I just put the numbers together. So I have this quantitative notion and idea of just how bad it is. It's not just something I see, man, our women are really going through it right now. No, I can tell you with great specificity the level at which our women are going through it. And it's astronomical. That's what I'm trying to get across is this is happening too often. And I can sit up and say this because I go just as hard in the paint for our brothers. You know what? When one of our brothers get killed by a cop and they start pulling out his rap sheet, I don't sit up there and go, well, he's about that life. It caught up with him. No. In that moment, did he do something that deserved him being killed? I don't give a shit about what happened before that. Did you have a right to take his life at that moment? Absolutely not. When you can sit up and, and, and take mass shooters into custody without incident, you mean to tell me you couldn't deal with this unarmed black man? So I'm, so it's not just Rick caping for black women. I cape for black. And I'm going to call shit on the carpet when it's time to call it on the carpet. You're going to be who you're going to be. You're going you're gonna to think that shit. I, and and, and I, I visit cats in the prison. I counsel cats in prison. I counsel their families. All of them thought they knew every damn thing. Couldn't tell them shit. I'm going to tell you this. You can believe it. You can take it however you want to take it. I'm not arguing. You can say whatever the hell you want to. You get disrespectful on my channel, I will block you. But your, your opinions are welcome. You say what you want to. I'm not coming back and I'm not defending shit on this video. I said what I said. But let me tell you something. until we get to a point where we can hold it down as men it doesn't matter what our women are doing they gladly give our women access to things and places in their society they don't give us access to because it doesn't matter how much she makes do you realize that we are the only race in which our women pretty much make what we make we our median our median income as as black men is forty four thousand. Last I checked it, it may have ventured up a little bit one way or another, but forty four thousand. Black women are forty two and something, almost forty three thousand. They are they're right there with us. There's tens of thousands between other men and their women in their race. White men out earn white women significantly. Uh, Asian men out earn Asian women significantly. Latino men, I earn Latin, Arab men, I, I, across the board, except for us. You know why? They purposely set that up. They commodified us, but then they brought our women in and gave them jobs that should have been given, giving us so that we could take care of our homes and we can maintain the balance in our homes. Whole nother, whole nother, whole nother story. And it, and we both bought into that. Both black women and black men, we are constantly looking at and blaming black women. 
and again, there's some culpability there. And one of the ways that there's culpability is how we easily bought into the don't need a man mentality because they commodified us, then gave you money. The commodification of the black men is they took all of the richness and the value out of the man and said, he's only for paying bills. And then they said, but here, now you can pay your bills either by being that bad beast of a, of a, of a go-getter and you get in your paper, you don't need him because he's a commodity and I got money. Or you, if you if you not if you don't have no drive, you can get on uh, government assistance, get in housing, and live and and, and, and and be ghetto fabulous. And you still don't need them because you got everything that the commodity would pay for. And with black women, I earn almost as much as you do. And in many instances, once you get to a certain level, she's out earning. All of this stuff is not an accident. We've got to learn that. Uh, and a lot of the ways that our men feel about our women is because of that. Because they tried to put our women in a space where we're competitive with them, we don't see them the way we should. We see them as competitive. We see them as equals. Hey, you trying to take my job. You trying to take my place. Uh, you, you, you know, and then you got a lot of sisters acting that way, you know. I, I deal with a couple of married time I come to the shop just bumping and talking crap to men like they're men and the moment that a man doesn't have that standard and comes back at them then they look around at the other men to defend them and I'm like hey I'm gonna talk to him hey bro you know ease up but then I'm finna go talk to her hey you don't get to step in his space and handle him the way a man handles him and expect him to be okay with that if you want to be treated like a lady act like one they don't like me here sometime either because again, I'm going to tell the truth. We're not gonna get anywhere where everybody's saying, man, I understand what you're saying. A brother, we had a conversation here last night. A brother said something that made a whole lot of sense. All this shit started in the early 90s when they started that, you need to keep an open mind, bullshit. What they were actually saying is you need to lower your standards. You need to let everybody do whatever the fuck they wanna do. Don't say nothing, let it go wherever it goes and everybody get what they get and do what they do. And that's not how societies operate. Societies operate on code. There are behavioral codes. Watch any other species on code. Lions will kill another lion getting off code. Hyenas will kill another hyena getting off code. Those are the species. They survive together, but somebody's off code. They're putting the rest of the pack or the pride or the herd in danger. Everybody's off code. Everybody's self self indulged. Everybody's about them. So it's easy to see why black men are sitting up saying, I don't care, but it's not acceptable. It's not a flex. It's a flaw. And it, it is what it is. I said what I said. I'm not coming back to defend it. And that's the end of that. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I said before, what we need to be doing is investing in the preparation and preparedness. One of the reasons we got so many men out here is we didn't socialize them. We didn't prepare them. We didn't move them into manhood the right way. Too many missing black men. 1.3 of the 1.5 missing are in prison. I know where they at. They not missing. They in prison. They say 1.5 million missing. No, 1.3 of them in prison. Well, we're the majority. That's where they at. Now, the others are checked out. Some of them on drugs. Some of them got mental health issues out there. But a bunch of other things. Some of them just ain't no good. That, but 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 that's what's happening. When you got that significant of a number, and it's in concentrated areas, the inner city where it's actually needed the most, you're gonna have a gap in development in manhood, and that's what black man lead is. It's the filler for the missing black man, so that we don't consistently see this cycle move in an increasing curve to the point to where we don't even have black men. And, and I've been in environments like that. I literally worked in an environment, me and my uh, brother, T.R., we've become real close. When I was in Dallas, in a place in, 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 in central Dallas, where there was a community, a housing community, where there was a 95% female head of household ratio. And the few men that were there were disabled. Can't be an able-bodied man in the house, in that housing project. 
So the only men that were there were disabled. They didn't have functionality. They weren't viewed and respected as being uh, uh, virile and, and and what you would look at and say, okay, that's a man. You know, they're there. They're in need of help. They're under they're under support. So the 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 respect structure isn't there. And they literally needed an influence so bad they offered me to move my office into their office. There's the apartment complex. One of the entire apartment. Uh, apartment buildings were made into the community center where I would go and I would work with the youth. Another one was made into offices for the housing project. They actually had housing offices on site for people to come into and fill out applications right there. And they were willing to give me an office in there to run my business out of just for there to be a male presence on the freaking property. And, and we don't see why there's a problem. Who, if I'm 10, who am I looking at to determine what I'm supposed to do as a man? My mom, my mom can tell me what she wants from a man. She can tell me how she want a man to treat, but she can't show me how to be that. She can't show me what to do or why I'm feeling a certain way when I start to go through puberty. When I start to develop a deeper voice, I start to become stronger. And I get a little bit more agitated and irritated quicker because of the rise of testosterone in my body. That's what dad does. Hey, son, you know, hey, you're getting a little stronger. Uh, I don't want to see you pushing your sister around. That strength that you're actually developing where you're getting stronger than her, that's not for you to go push around and beat up on you. I know she's been handling you for a while, but that's not what that's for. That's for you to actually defend her. That's to make sure nobody harms her. That's the lesson. That's the first lesson. Black men protect black women. One thing black men don't do is whine. And I'm not talking about sitting up and saying nothing bothers you. I, that's a problem too, sitting up talking about, uh, you know, I'm good. I tell my boys all the time, look, after five, I'm good. We're going to sit down and talk. No way you're good all the time. Now, some people are just upbeat and they're good most of the time. But I know as a black man, we're always going through something. There's always something coming down the pipeline. And we need somewhere to talk. We need to be able to admit, I'm not feeling good. I'm not up to par. I'm not myself. I'm not okay. It, that's not what I'm talking I'm talking about sitting up. It's everybody's fault and oh, whoa, it's me. No, we're going to have to stand up, square up, and get our shit together. Because this is the truth. At the end of the day, we're only going to get as far as we can physically lead our women, and our children, and our elderly. And we're going to have to collectively come together as brothers and stop competing with one another and definitely stop competing with our women. On that note, I'm out of here, you guys. Have an unbelievable day.